Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. My name is Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Today we're going to be looking at watercolour paper and what's the right paper for you. So let's get going. Just before we start, there's a couple of things I'd like to mention. First of all, the papers which I'm recommending here today are just purely papers that I've used. I've been teaching watercolour now for nearly 30 years and clearly I haven't tried every paper on the market, but these are papers which I've always found to be reliable, good value for money and certainly readily available. The other thing to mention is that I'm not affiliated to any particular manufacturer at all. I'm not sponsored by anybody, but if they want to send me some free samples, I ain't going to complain. Now the subject of watercolour paper is vast and I could make an eight hour documentary on the subject alone and bore the pants off everyone. So what I want to do with this little video is really home it in and just give you the basic information, the basic details that you need to choose a paper which you're going to be happy with. Okay, with the three big ones, paper, paint and brushes, I would put the paper as the most important. Often when I find students first come to me and they're disappointed with what they've been painting, it's often down to poor quality paper. So Paul's tip of the day is don't buy rubbish. Watercolour paper is particularly made for watercolour painting. It has an ingredient in it called size and what that does it stops the fast absorption of water into the paper which is really important. Cheap watercolour paper won't have this. There's plenty of high street shops which are selling what they call artist's quality watercolour paper where you'd pay about $4.99. Well, as you can imagine, it's not going to be good quality. So don't go that route. OK, there's two main types of paper. There's the pulp, the wood based papers, which are the less expensive papers. And then you go on to the 100% cotton rag papers, which are very durable and tough. But if you're starting out um, and you're doing a lot of practicing with brush strokes and just getting used to washes, then the cheaper uh, wood pulp papers are ideal. OK, so how do we buy our paper? Well, first off, let's talk about the pad. This is available in most art shops, usually comes with a wire bound, simple, you paint on your picture, you rip it off or you can leave it in the pad. Comes in all sorts of sizes and shapes and paperweights, but that's probably the one I would suggest for people starting out. A pad is a great, great way to keep your watercolour paper. OK, then we have a watercolour block. Now, a block is gummed on all four sides and I'll talk to you a little later about why we might want to use a block. Then you can buy paper as individual loose sheets. Most good art shops would cut it for you or trim it for you. It's normally available in imperial sizes, so you would have a quarter sheet imperial, a half sheet imperial and a full sheet would be two of these. You can also buy it in board form, which is wonderfully expensive, or if you need a vast quantities, a dirty great big roll of it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the weight of the paper. Now, most pads you buy will have a little label on it explaining the weight of the paper. Now, you'll notice here you've got 300 GSM, which is the more modern way of measuring weight. GSM standing for grams per square meter. But you'll also get the good old fashioned 140 pound. Um, now, what that actually means, because there's no way this pad weighs 140 pounds. But if you were to get a ream, which is 500 sheets and weigh it, it would come to 140 pounds. So madness. There we go. So in most cases, if you're buying a pad, it's going to be around about that sort of weight, a good middle of the range weight. So now we're going to move on to the surface or the press of the paper. Now, this is important depending on what type of paintings you like to do. We'll start off with 
what's known as hot press. Sometimes you just get an HP to signify hot press. This is a Bockingford. Now with your hot press, it's really very much like the name suggests. The paper has been hot pressed with a big iron to press it flat. So what you in fact get is beautiful, smooth, soft surface paper. And it's perfect if you're someone who likes to paint with a lot of detail, perhaps a botanical illustrator, you like to put fine work on it, then this is ideal for you because I say it's smooth, it accepts paint beautifully, um, fantastic for fine detail. With hot pressed paper, our edges remain nice and sharp and the washes tend to dry flat. Your next paper is probably the most commonly used of all and this is known as your cold press. Sometimes it's referred to as not, which basically means it's not been hot pressed. Um, this is by Langton, which is made by Dale Rowney. Many, many, many manufacturers make cold press paper, most commonly available, commonly used. Most watercolour artists will probably use a cold press paper. What this paper has is a, a tooth or a texture to it. And this is what we love to use to get some wonderful watercolor effects. So if you're a beginner, I would definitely recommend a cold press paper. With cold press, we start to get a mottled effect as the paint sinks into the valleys of the paper. We also see the dry brush effect as the brush just skims across the surface. Then finally, we'll have our rough. Now, rough is fairly similar to the cold press paper. It's got that texture to it. But as the name suggests again, it's got very much more of a coarser grain texture to it. Now, if you're someone who likes to perhaps paint fairly loose or more impressionistic, then perhaps the rough paper is good for you. But I would suggest again that if you're fairly new to watercolour painting, start with the cold press, but certainly give the rough a go because it can get some wonderful textures with it. With the rough paper, you have to apply much more paint and you can see the texture of the paper really begin to come through. Okay, so now I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the brands that I use. Now, we've already talked about Bockingford, which is made by St. Cuthbert's Mill, which is very good quality. Langton, again, this is made by Dela Rowney, always good value. Uh, this is a Cotman paper made by Windsor & Newton, again, excellent quality. But if you want to now get up the far end, the posh end, the expensive end, then probably the one paper which most professional artists will use is our Arsh. Beautiful paper. They've been making it in the same French village since 1492. So I'm guessing they probably know how to make the paper. Um, I would also add into that list Saunders Waterford, um, Fabriano, Artistico. Again, both good quality, top end, 100% cotton papers. Also, you'll find that most of these manufacturers will make the full range of sizes and finishes. Now, I know there'll be people screaming at me saying, but you haven't mentioned my favourite paper, Cuthbertson's Dingley Dell Rough, made by Latvian monks for 300 years. Yes, of course, there'll be certainly lots of papers that I don't even know about and I haven't tried. But what I would say about these papers that I've recommended, most of them are readily available and all of them offer pretty good value for money. So if there are some papers that you think deserve to be mentioned, please let us know. Just pop them down in the comments and educate us all because there'll certainly be some American brands that I've never heard of that aren't available here in the UK. So just stick them down there. That'll be great. So next, I'd just like to talk to you a little bit about one of the watercolour artist's worst nightmares. Yes, that's it. It's the buckling of paper. So what I'm going to do now is just show you some ways that we can avoid it.
First of all, if you tend to paint in either a very delicate way, leaving lots of white paper, or perhaps you paint in line and wash, then you might find that buckling paper has never really been an issue. So why does our paper buckle? If you just tape your paper down with just ordinary masking tape and you apply a large wet wash, say perhaps you're painting the sky, what you'll find is that the very wet paint will cause the paper to warp in waves and the paint then will begin to settle into the valleys. As you can see, when it's dried, it's left some horrible staining. So how do we solve this? What we do is we stretch our paper. Start by totally submerging our paper into a sink of clean water. We then leave it there for at least five minutes. Depending on the paper, if it's left too long, you could dissolve some of the sizing. Using some gummed tape, lay your wet paper flat onto a sturdy wooden board and stick the tape around all four edges. Then simply wet the top with a sponge. To start with, you'll probably notice that it will begin to buckle slightly, but as it dries, it will stretch flat. Now you need to wait at least three hours before you use it. It's even better to leave it to dry overnight. There we go, a beautifully stretched paper that we can throw lots of watery paint at that won't buckle. Okay, I mentioned this earlier, we have a watercolour block. Now this is slightly more expensive than a pad. How this works is it's gummed on the four sides. Now it's not stretched paper, okay, but it does help reduce the buckling. How it works is you'll paint on the top sheet. Once that's dry, you can just put your knife in the little gap in the front, work it round, peel off the sheet and then work on the next one. So it's a great alternative. To stretching paper. Okay so finally we have using thicker paper. Now this is some Arsh 300 pound. Beautiful paper, love it. Mwah. This in fact is my preferred route to go down. What's good about it is that you can throw loads of water at it, lots of nice wet washes and you get very little buckling indeed. What I would say though is if you're practicing or you're a beginner, probably not the best paper to use, very expensive, but for your finished work, nothing better. Well, there we have it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed that and that you've learned something from it. If you have, please would you like or subscribe somewhere along the front here. It really does make a difference. If you'd like to learn more from me, you can always buy my book, which is available online or from most good bookshops. Oh. Watercolour by Paul Clark. So, take care everyone. It's goodbye from me. I'm going to leave you with a few paintings that I've done and I've labelled the paper that I've used. Bye for now.